Hey y'all, welcome back to the Jungle Diff podcast. Uh, I am Llama, joined by Mossy and Shady Gecko. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to jump into a tier list maker for the jungle role in this current patch 12.5. Um, with keeping CCS in mind when it comes to how we rank these champions, what's the best for your team, what's the best for our team um, at this current meta as it's evolving. So there's some stipulations, some caveats as we get into this. Uh, Shady Gecko, can you kind of explain how we're thinking about some of these things in our tier makers or putting this all together today? Sure. So a couple assumptions uh, are that one, uh, this is like the assuming the teams are even. So you have like five plat one players versus five plat one players. And uh, both teams have, you know, a good sense of a macro, early game, mid game, late game, etc. cetera. Uh, so trying to keep things, you know, even as far as that goes. Um, and then did you want me to break down the tier list as well? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to kind of, yeah, do a little breakdown okay. on kind of how it's going to S plus is going to be uh, this champ is pick ban or these champs, like you should either be picking them or banning them. It's basically B1 only unless you know, like maybe R1 if you know that the other team's going to trade for something else. Um but most of the time, red side will be banning this, or blue if they want to pick something else. Um, <clears throat> S tier is going to be uh, blindable champs, so you're picking this. You can pick it up B1 if if that other champ has been banned, or you can pick it in R1. You don't you don't really care, and it fits into most comps. Um, that is another uh, stipulation, is that you know the the lower down these champions are doesn't necessarily mean they're always terrible. It could be, you know, that they're only good, you know, a C tier champ or a D tier champ is going to only be good in, you know, one situation, two situations, or you have to like R5 it, uh, and then it's like OP. Uh, but that being said, uh, so S tier the, are those blind champs. A tier is like you could pick that first phase. Uh, they're good counter picks to some of the S tier champions. Um, they, you'd be happy getting this champion, you know. It's just something to, to fill the team with and, and can work in most comps. Uh, B tier, you're starting to get down a little lower. Uh, you know, you're, you, for some reason, are picking jungle second phase and, and the other ones have been banned out or been not looking good. They have good counters uh, in some situations and they can be generally strong and, and you wouldn't be too sad about picking up a B tier champ. C tier, uh, there are champs in B tier, A tier, and above that do what this champion does better. Um, you could still get away with it. They have some, you know, all champions in league are unique for the most part. So they have some uses and, and use cases. And if you're really good on them, then sure, uh, go ahead and pick them. Uh, D tier is, you pr probably should not be picking this. Uh, if if you are, then you've got a really good reason for it. And then E tier is uh, just, what are you doing? Stop. Just don't pick this. <laughs> You are actually griefing your draft and you will lose. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So yeah, we're going to go through these alphabetically and put them in and uh, kind of on some first impressions and we'll each, you know, talk through these champs. And then um, at the end, maybe we'll do some final moving and say, okay, as we see everything now together. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it here. So um, I'll get us started here. The very first champ alphabetically, which is a Moo Moo. Um, for me, I played a lot of Mumu jungle, especially when it was really popular support as a flex pick. So I think it has some agency there, but it's very single target or like single, you know, mode champ. You got to go in, you got to land your R, um, you know, it has some things going for it. But like, ultimately, I think there's going to be better engage it, engagers. There's going to be better peelers. Um, you know, if you miss your Q or don't have ult, like those are some major you know, discretionary things. And early game, it kind of gets this right in the jungle. Like... Most of these other junglers will 1v1 a Moomoo. -moo. Like, it's not going to be a champ great. So, you know, to start off, I'd be throwing a Moomoo -moo in C tier, personally. Uh, yeah, yeah I can agree with this. I So I'm actually, like, a big, big Moomoo -moo fan, or at least I was. Uh, like, that first season that I played League, which was, like, pretty recently, I, like, played a whole season of a Moomoo. -moo. Uh, I was terrorizing gold. You know, I was a problem. Um, this champ's, like, really exploitable, though, as you pointed out, um, especially in, like, a comp environment. Uh, he's honestly, I would argue to put him in D because, mm. like, I think it's just so so exploitable. And, like, yes, it does bring some things to the table with the CC, and like, it scales decently, but there's just you know, stuff out there. Like, I, if you want a direct comparison, I think Zach does everything that a Mumu does, but yep. better. 100%. So, I agree. Yeah, I think C or D. Yeah, yeah, I, I think his uh, early game issues are where, uh, He's got like the most issues, especially right now. I took a little quick look at like win rates and stuff. And, you know, normally a Mumu, when he's like okay, 
is sitting like one or two percent above baseline, you know, and right now he's like directly at baseline and games in solo queue go a lot longer, which is where Amumu starts to be that unkillable tank and everything. Mm -hmm. And in comp play, you know, early game is so important. That's why you got your Zin Sao's Jarvan, uh, you know, at, at the top prime level in, in, in pro play, let's say, uh, that are being picked all the time because having that early game lets these late game scalers that are the flavor of the month right now uh, you know, get to that point where they can start taking over the games. So, yeah. uh, I, I agree. Um, I think this is one we're going to, we're going to come back to, yeah. uh, but I would put him in, in, we, we'll put him in, in, in C for now. Okay. I was going to say, I could, deal I could, I could see, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I changed my mind as I was sure. talking, but, uh, he, he could, he could move down to D tier as, as we go through. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You want to jump in the next one there? Uh, yeah, sure. So next one would be Diana, right? Uh, my personal opinion on this champ, I think I'm standing out here, but I think this champ's actually S plus tier, uh, as opposed to just being S tier. I think she's just as strong as Hecarim, if not more, which I guess that's a reveal for later, but, um, those are like the two champs in my mind that are just, you can blind pick this, like, it doesn't really matter. This champ is gonna have the tools to, you know, it can power farm, you know, it has amazing ganks, it ha like, it scales well, like, there's really no downside to this champ right now. I can't really think of a situation where I wouldn't want to be Diana, basically, mm -hmm. so, Interesting. yeah, I'd put her S+, plus, but what do you guys think? So my uh, reasoning to put her in S uh, is that, and and maybe even A tier, actually, uh, which is where I had her in my in my list, is that the, um, a very important issue that Diana brings up, and it, it can be solved, but it does lock you into, uh, you know, you either go AD mid or you have double AP mid and jungle, which um, one of my uh, friends is a master's jungler. And when we talked about Diana in the past, one of his complaints with her uh, is that it's very easy to itemize uh, for both mid and jungle because mid and jungle are like one of the most important, like around the map combos. Uh, because, you know, they're either going top and diving or they're going bot and diving or you're fighting for Dragon or you're fighting for Rift Herald. And if somebody can just build Merc Treads and be itemized against both of you, uh, then that can really hurt. And you can solve that by having, you know, AD top and AD bot, but you're kind of locked into that early game weakness. Um, so that's why I would I would put her more at S or A. But I, I do agree that she's very strong and, and farms really well. And you can go tank on her now, so you, you can kind of mitigate some of that um damage profile mm -hmm. yeah i mean I, I i think i hear both sides of that too you know i think like as masi was saying like there's a lot of times where having a diana in your team is good um i think it is open to a flex still mid you know i don't think it's something that has a lot of matchups mid so typically it's getting pushed jungle um but you know i you're right about having the 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 if you kind of need to pick 80 mid unless you're going to really opt for double ap and then maybe pick hyperscale like a jinx or vein where like if they itemize too much mr like it might be as valuable um i think also like i'm typically playing it like a nasher's build where maybe it's like you can play more attack speed and like actually clear better but you know i, I see you shaking your head gecko because i i think you know really what i'm seeing at higher level of play in lcs is like you just go full AP, you go, you know, into the one shot, get Zonia's two or three, and then just like go in, press our Zonia's and then like chunk out people, you know, kind of like we're seeing with some of these other champs. So like- All about play making. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of gotta be, you know, like I, I do think Diana's really strong. I think you can blind her too. I think she's a totally solid blind pick. So because of that, like that makes me think maybe she's S tier because, um, you know, I wouldn't quite bring her down to A, but I think we're kind of right there between kind of A and S, and I think that kind of splits the middle oh, between the lowest and, yeah. and the end right there. I'm, so. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. How about for Echo? Okay. Uh, for Echo, uh, assassins in comp play are very hard to play if if all if everybody's good, because uh, one of the issues is that assassins want gold. They need early kills, and they want that gold on them. Uh, and right now, you know, some of the best AD carries, they want the gold on them as well as the mid laners and top. I mean, you can, you know, do some of these other things, but uh, he is, you know, he can be burst. And I think that there are better assassins than him right now. So if you're going to pick an assassin, um, you could pick something else. I think he, he's okay. Um, but like, I'd r way more rather have like Diana or even Kha'Zix. Uh, so cool. I would put him, gosh, I don't know. It's like C or B. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll see what you guys think. Who's the who's the really good? Uh, isn't there an Echo jungler for in CCS right now, or is he a mid lane player? Uh, I think he's. You're thinking of Hadio, the Hadio? Horizon mid laner. I th oh, no, 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 no. Is he Horizon? He's. Uh... I thought we were just banning. Oh, Echo. Hey, 
Hajo is uh, TA Knight, I think. TA Knight. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Plays Echo. Uh, uh, I watched a lot of this guy's games. I played against him in scrims. The Echo Champ is just one that, like, it's so hit or miss. And more often than not, it's missing the mark, uh, especially from the say, jungle role. Like, it's just so hard them. to make it work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you too. Yeah, as you're saying, like, you need to get resources, you know, and if you're going to get resources on a champ, having a, you know, really strong echo, I, I don't think is going to, like, insta win, you know, like, people don't play it a whole lot. So like, I think there's some cheese to it. That'd be the only kind of, I think, redeeming side to be like, hmm, I don't really know. But his early clear, yeah. I don't think is great either, you know, like his, his first few levels, not saying you need that right now. But yeah, I'm kind of with you on that B to C tier, Mossy. Do you want to be the kind of? Are you the final voice in that? What What do you think? Where, uh, I, you stick them? I would say C tier personally. C -tier? I'm, I'm kind of an echo hater. I kind of hate the champ personally. <laughs> let's drop. Them, yeah, let's drop them there. Are, um, are we ranking the tiers? Uh, left oh, to right, or how, oh, are we oh, just doing oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Do we want to like? Is it better than a move? Oh, I think that's too hard. I think. I think just long <laughs> I, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, might be because they are different champions. That's true. So like, right, yeah, yeah we can also are. go back in if, if we want afterwards. And say, we'll, okay, we'll do it alphabetical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah I'm done. Um, sure. Jump into Elise. I think Elise is not great and competitive, honestly. Um, I, I think you know she has her cocoon. She has single tar target lockdown. If you're playing a pick comp, I think she can be viable at times. Um, I don't think she's ever going to be a first half unless you're saying we're going to try to win at 10 minutes. And if you're trying to pick an early game jungler like that, that has mobility and has some dive potential with Repel, like there's better options. Lee Sin does things like this better. I think she's hard to execute. Mid late game, I feel like she has her W for like poke damage, but like beyond that, it's not great. She has some execute, but you know, yeah, I, I would really not put her any higher than B, but I think Elise is probably in the B to C tier for me. Put her, uh, put her next to Echo. Yeah. I mean, she's like the same yeah. concept, just the other side, right? Echo's scaling, and Elise is early. So yeah, yeah I... you, you pick her if you want to like absolutely dumpster top lane with like a secure shutdown, like yeah. Renekton or something. But Renekton's not meta right now, so yeah. Nope. Uh, I have an interesting perspective on this because uh, when Lights Genesis, our current support player, we did like a role swap before the season when he was playing jungle. He was playing a lot of Elise because he was like. Like, he's a fill player in solo queue, and when he gets jungle, he plays Elise, basically. Uh, it's definitely, like, a very, like, specialized champ. I do think of it a lot, like, uh, Nidalee right now, where there's, like, it's, like, mechanically, like, it's difficult to pull off. And then, um, you know, it's very strong in the early game, and, like, that's kind of all it has going for it. Uh, like, you have to be really good at this champ to, like, even consider yeah. picking it, I think. So I, th I think C tier is, like, a yeah. good place for it. It's, it's hard to make it work right now. That is another thing to uh, include is that, we're presuming that the players playing these champions are like mastery seven, you know, 50 K. But, but you still points. think like they're piloting it at a P one level, right? Like we're not saying if yes. you execute yeah, yeah, champ yeah, yeah. perfectly, exactly. right? Like, yeah. yeah. Like champs like Lee San, I think are more value in, in, you know, master plus versus right. in plot one for just sure. because of, yeah, the, yep. the uh, margin of error for sure. Yep. Okay. And I think Ev kind of falls in that category too. So I'm excited to hear where mm -hmm. you're thinking that one's going. Oh yeah, that's right. That's me. Um, yeah, I, it's like I don't see a lot of Evelyn. She works in solo queue, I guess. Sometimes he loses to the the Chinese smurfing Evelyn. Feels bad, but and, and it's not really something I worried I would worry about in comp. Uh, I I don't know. You know, I have watched League for a while, but I don't. I can't really think of too much of a time when Evelyn was like strong in comp. Uh, mm -hmm. Like when I say a while, I guess I mean like the past like two or three years. Um, yeah, I I would probably put this. Champion like C tier, like if you you know, if you really want to draft around it, and like make it work somehow, I, I'm sure it's like okay, but there's just better. Yeah, I don't have too much to add. I'm kind of with uh, you on that. You... Um, that yeah, I think like she can kind of scale for free if there's nothing else going on. But I mean, that's not why you're picking Evelyn, and <laughs> there yeah. should be better things to pick. So, uh, so were we saying C tier? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Any disagreement? You think that's a good place for it? No, I, think, I think that's good. Um, yeah. I almost want to move Elise to D tier. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm with you. Um, I was considering it. Because, like, we're, otherwise we're just going to fill up C tier like, yeah. with a ton of champions. Yeah. No, I agree. To be like, gotta, they're not great. The they're down they're not say, trash. I, yeah, I agree. I, I think would rather I, I have Evelyn stricter. than I would Elise, you know? Like, for sure. For sure. No. All right. I'm with you. Uh, Fiddlesticks. Um, I think that. Uh, it's the same issue where you have AP uh, mid and top. 
Um, but this one, I think I would move to B tier just because he has that really fast clearing. He can kind of catch up. If, if someone's playing like Diana or something, you know, you can counter that with the uh, Fiddlesticks and go AD mid versus AD mid. Uh, so, you know, he can counter those kind of things. He's got the AoE Fear. If your team's really good with Vision, uh, I, which I think is a high execution thing, so it, it's it's borderline. But I've played against some teams that have the Fiddlesticks and are really good at it, and it's 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 scary, you know. <laughs> um, and I've played against some teams who played fiddle sticks and have been terrible. Um, so I I would put him uh, in B tier. Yeah, I think the only thing to add, like I think you're right about the vision. I think it's even something to highlight more, both on the effigy vision that you can get for like sweeping out and holding space, but also like it makes your team play differently because you have to always be checking over walls as you're looking to siege. You have to be even more intentional mm -hmm. about warding flanks and stuff like that because Fiddle can find those weird angles that like most other champs, like you don't have that much, you know, like impact on how a team needs to play the game. So like... I, I, you know, I think he could even be A tier because he has a fast clear as well. Um, I don't play the champ too much myself, but I, like, I think he provides enough other like mind pieces to the game that make you think differently. Every time you see a fiddle on your screen, you're like, is it an effigy or not? You know, and it like, I feel like for that, maybe it just adds more value that way. Um, but I, I would say kind of A or B. Masi, I don't know, like, if you want to be the deciding voice uh, there. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I have a hard time putting this guy. In a, but I think that's because I don't play against it that much. I know in EU there's like a lot of hype around this champ. Uh, they definitely play it there like a fair amount. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I, I've even seen like a pro game or two, or maybe it's just like a lot of high elo fiddlesticks. Uh, yeah, I do know EU play, has played like an I think if we're like too. ranking him against the other. Right, right. Um, I'm just worried about him against a lot of the mm -hmm. what we're going to be putting in. That's, as, that's what as I'm as saying. Plus, yeah. Like, like, yep. I don't think um, he can keep up with, with the other champs in regards to like ability to impact the map. So mm -hmm. maybe a little, a little lower. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think B tier, so I think that impact that is definitely tier. huge, especially the first 15, 20 minutes, right? Like, yeah, mid late game, you can always find an angle maybe, but like if, if your win condition is a fiddle, like I don't think you're in a great spot. Yeah, uh, I would, um, he also is kind of like reactive. Like you mm -hmm. want the other team to be coming into you and then you jump on them. And if you're being reactive, you're already kind of in, like, that's not the most common way to play. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, most, or, you know, you also have to, you have to assume the other team is like a dive comp, like they're coming at you. Yeah. That they're not kiting back. Because if they're kite back comp, like Fiddles is, is crying. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you can never uh, get deep in a vision unless you get a huge yeah. flank, right? So I think yeah. the situations where he's like OP, OP yeah. are less than maybe our A tier. Yeah, I, I agree. Which I agree. I'm willing later to, to bump him up. So, totally. uh, but we we can uh, take a look at Gragas now. Yeah, I, I think for Gragas, like honestly, like I don't have too much to say about him. I, I I think really, I think he's better top. Like is really my big thing. I think he really shuts down a lot of lanes top jungle. I think having Gragas on a team is valuable. I think having Gragas jungle is not. Um, is kind of what I would say. If you have Predator, you have some gank potential, you have some kind of disrupt and, and move around. Um, but I, I would probably put him in B tier even after saying all that because he does have flex potential and has other things as a champion. But ultimately, like, I'm not going to want to have a Gragas in the jungle when we can just play at top instead. I think I'd be inclined to put him maybe into a tier i'm between a and b i played a lot of gragas jungle so far um and i've had a lot of success with him in solo queue uh unfortunately have to like concede to what you're saying about him being better in top lane because he's so good at neutralizing lanes uh his matchups really aren't that bad though like i i think in general like if you are in i mean i guess i can't make that argument because we're assuming everyone can play everything uh yeah, it, it, it's sad. I think in the current meta, if he wasn't so good top lane, then yeah, maybe we see him in jungle more. I, I, think, I, I think he's extremely valuable, though. I think he's like the best tank, maybe. Um, in top lane, you mean? I, I guess, yeah, I, I guess he too. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think he's one of the best tanks in, in the jungle, truthfully. I think he's a tank like, in the jungle? Yeah, no. So, uh, I, I, I guess we can't really pull up my OPGG, but. Um, you can build Everfrost, you can build Chem Tank, you can build different things. Uh, he has like a lot of versatility, um, and really everything works because just how strong he is right now. You don't necessarily need to build into the Thimble Winter, but it's like you know if if you can get there, like it feels really really good. 
Um, so yeah, the champs uh, just uh, obviously the, the, uh, the thing I'll say is like he can be sort of hard to pull off sometimes, but if we're assuming you could play him really well, well then you know, yeah, I think he's great. He so, uh, gives you a lot of playmaking ability on your team for sure. The reason that I'll put the uh, deciding vote to B tier is that um, <clears throat> is uh, he doesn't clear uh, very fast at all. He's very reliant on level three gank, level you know, getting that level three gank, having it succeed, blowing a flash, and then repeat ganking, um, and and ganking a lot. But I think he does that better than, uh, you know, our C tier list. Um, but I don't think I think you know he gets outpaced by A S and S plus, especially when you have lanes that are paying attention to Ogragus being in the game, um, and like looking out for that. And then I think that like. His his burst like just isn't strong enough to one shot people anymore, uh, and, and really it's just that he's not getting enough farm as some of these other you know. Characters. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, no, I hear that. Okay. Is that Mossy there? Uh, next one yeah. is me, right? For Graves, yeah. yeah. Uh, Graves is a weird one. <laughs> uh, in comp, I think he suffers from the same thing Gregus does, where you just kind of want him top lane, right? Uh, Even hole breaker nerfs, you know, though I think kind of at the least made it top. Yeah, it got rid of him. Top, I don't honestly. think as much because he was. I mean, he was top before hole breaker, and That's I think right. he's still going to be top after hole breaker. I don't think it changes anything, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, the old build was like the bloodthirster stuff with IE, right? Uh, I I still think he's just a champ with like so much lane pressure in the top lane. Uh, as for his jungle matchups, uh, you have to play really greedy on him, right? And like if you have a comp built around him then you can have like your mid laner support you on these invades and stuff and that can be really powerful um i'd probably put him into b tier b, yep. I, between I a agree. and b because he's obviously a very powerful champ but i think you want the setup around him to make him work uh because yep. obviously he's very resource hungry yep yep no i'm with you I, I think the only thing like i compare him to kindred as well as being like needing to play aggressive and like early prio and i'd rather have a kindred ult than a graves ult on my team you know so if we're thinking about that oh yeah matchups and stuff like oh, yeah i think it brings down his value too so yeah and as i'm looking yeah it's gonna be oh, better than our c tier champs but um. one thing though have you guys seen the the new gore drinker build it's like gore drinker and death dance and black cleaver um it's I, I've seen in it in like diamond and like higher elo a fair amount. Uh, it kind of makes you unkillable on this champ. Um, maybe something interesting to talk about later in in regards to the meta. I just wanted to know if you guys had seen it or not. No, I haven't. I have, um, we'll have to talk about it later. Yeah, then. yeah. No, we'll talk about it later. Uh, okay, Gwen. <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna have uh, some opinions here. Um, I would like Gwen to be our first E tier champion. Um. Uh, I will try to make my case. Uh, so she is currently sitting at let's take a look forty below forty five percent win rate. Uh, when the average win rate is fifty one, so she's seven percent uh, below the uh, average. And is this and is this solo queue plot plus? Just so I give some. This is solo queue plot plus. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. Uh, on Law Analytics, yep. is the website I'm using yep. for patch twelve point five. Um, I think that uh, the that. Those tiny nerfs uh, ended up making a huge difference on objectives and stuff, which is super important. And I think that it was already at a, she was already borderline in my opinion um, because she was she was picked a lot because she could flex to both jungle and top. Now she's not really good top. She's she's still decent, I think, um, but like she definitely got taken down a peg by the fifty range. But then her jungle now that she's not like super prior top lane, her jungle. That makes her even less, you know, viable in the jungle. And then also, she just takes so long to get to these breakpoints. Where is a team going to let you get to those breakpoints? And she's just, she's just gonna like, just don't pick it. You're you're actively hurting yourself if you pick uh, Gwen. 
In yeah, my that, yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and Gecko, you, but no, who is it that uh, put, uh, it might have been Okami. Someone someone was talking to Trash Talk about, like, imagine picking Zed and Gwen in 12.5. No, nope, and... that was me. Oh, that was you, Gecko? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, <laughs> so, so I'm glad you're so opinionated about that because, um, you know, we, we did pick it that week when you were talking shit about it. And I, like, Which is I, funny I, because everybody assumed I was talking about them. Oh, yeah, 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 because we both drafted we both of it when we played the Zen. <laughs> three bit. teams, three separate <laughs> series drafted Gwen, Zen. That's really funny. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I don't think she's game potential I, I think she is fine skirmish in a 2v2 if you're playing over neutrals like i think she's okay the item breakpoint is a big thing for her i think she has late game insurance to be like all right if i can get you know somebody like rift maker voids st- or uh rift maker nashers is kind of her core and then like zonia's into it like on level 16 you're going to just you know basically win fights which is why she was picked top two so it was more like because she wasn't nerfed she was a strong champ to have on the team and she can mitigate a lot of range, but like it's, it feels much more mitigation than actual proactivity. And like, I feel like if you're saying, Hey, we need Gwen on this team, like don't play a jungle. Like if you need a Gwen, don't play a jungle. It has terrible gank setup. It really doesn't do much. You're going to run at someone with a pair of scissors and ghost and like, you're not going to do anything until 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'd say D or E tier. I'd probably put her C with some of those other chances. I'm looking at them, but um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe Mossy can be the deciding. Yeah, like yeah. That. I- I was talking to my uh, drafter about this last night. I was talking about this champ because um, he's like we had scrimmed a little bit. Uh, I think E tier, maybe even D tier, is a bit of an overreaction. Uh, the champion has never been strong in solo queue. The solo queue win rate has always been dog shit, especially if you look at plat plus. Uh, she's Hard to make work. You definitely have to draft around her. Um, you know, I think she's still fine when she hits that spike of, you know, whatever it is, the the Riff Maker Nashers, or I, I've I built like Everfrost Nashers. Uh, that's some Okami tech. It's like a big Gwen fan. He's really sad he can't play at mid. Uh, the matchups are rough. I look at this champion in it, very similar to like Lilia. You're kind of like I mean, you're getting some kind of like obviously like you don't have like the same you know crazy team fight sleep, um, but she definitely helps your team fight. She definitely scales really well. She's a strong source of AP damage. Um, you know, the later in the game it goes, you're gonna be like, oh dang, I'm kind of glad we have this champ. Uh, I don't think she's totaled yet because I think in comp you are able to mitigate losses a lot more. Um, so it, you know, if you can guarantee that like you know, you're not just going to get invaded and, like, dunked on a bunch. You can kind of farm up and scale, especially in, like, a plat right. league. How- um, you can get away with a lot. Uh, I would probably put her into either C or D tier. She's definitely hard to work around. I just don't think she's completely so, useless. Yeah. Um, I, I hear you on that, but at the same time, how are you going to guarantee that she's not getting run over by, like, a Vola Bear or Hecarim um, when she's this much? Because because she's doing, uh, you know, less damage to monsters, she's farming slower. Um, she's not getting objectives, so the team's got like three objectives now, and she's like, "Okay, I got my second item," and and it's like, "Soul is gone." And um, the the other thing is, I, I do, I, I am a big stats person, and people make fun of me for it all the time, <laughs> because I and I have learned to not look at both these stats too much, but I do like using them as a guide and a reference, and. She went from being 1.5, and you say like she's never been a solo queue monster. She was 1.5% below the average, um, so you can kind of say 48.5. She's now 7% below, like just from those changes, which granted, and it's been a week, so people have gotten used to the range and everything, and she's still like that much lower. So I I, I guess I can agree with you. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll slide a little bit, but I think D tier yeah. at most. I'm with you. And as I'm seeing these other D tier, in terms of like sources of AP damage, like, if like, hey, our team really needs AP. I'd prefer to have, honestly, even like a Mumu. Like, I know Mumu isn't crazy AP, like, if you're building them tank, but like, a Mumu, Echo, Evelyn, like, all of them I think are going to be, you know, doing more than you know, a Gwen that will like in terms of AP damage, but you know, yeah, I, th- I think there might be options. Like, I don't think you're hard griefing draft by picking Gwen jungle. Um, maybe as, as, as a shady gecko might be thinking on some of the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not something that I'm going to be pulling out. So, um, on the I'm adamant three. against Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> Do not pick it. It's Gwen <laughs> hater. I am. I am. I'm excited for this next champ coming in, though. You know, on count of three, we could all play oh, on the okay. same who's, champ. Who's you know, this, this is the I, I, is this one back to me. Uh, now? This is you. This is all you, right. Yeah. You know, I'm, this is just going to slowly climb up the tier list all the way. Um, yeah, I, just from there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. if you're not playing Hecarim Jungle, 
I think you're griefing right now. Um, we were playing it. We lost game one. I picked Poppy because I was worried about a Diana. They picked it R3. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. And the next two games, we got it. And we won with it. Like, it has so much flexibility. Even though it's kind of a one-mo champ, like, you go in with R and fear the entire team for three seconds. Like, that's never going to be a bad thing. What you just said? Yeah, is, is exactly why. <laughs> oh, and then you can also push back the carry for another, like, 600 units or something crazy. Um, that's the biggest thing. That's what I yeah. do with them all the time. It's like, their carry is not doing anything but hitting a tank. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are they gonna do? And, and then you still have so much. <laughs> and then run away. <laughs> and you can still like be unkillable even if you're not going the chem mm -hmm. tank, you know, into uh, you know, yeah, tank tanks build. The, the build diversity is a big build thing. Yeah, right. you can still go um, conquer or triforce into like death stance, yep. and yeah, it's just like if you're not. You playing could do triforce. Team. You could do sunderer. Um, I know. Uh, <laughs> Dono is like a very like the the Hecarim guy. He's a very polarizing figure in the community, but like I'm uh i've learned a lot from watching that guy's stream i watched like a lot of his videos and i like learned a lot of his reasoning for hecarim and like that the itemization is like the biggest almost the biggest reason why i think this champ is just so good right now because you know even if you're chem tank like you don't have to go the monomune crazy one shot build um you know even if you're on conqueror you know you don't have to go sunderer and just like tank up or like beef up you know you, you have just so many options and um in regards to, like you know how you want to play the game like frozen heart is great um spirit visage is great like there are just so many items in different situations not to mention he's a great death dance which you mm -hmm. know is great for a jungler right now um yeah this champ just yeah. s plus tier there. and the amount of yeah. ad he gets from other places much else to too. say about it you know like I think, I, yeah yeah like yeah and there's a lot of champions speeding him up right now in the meta um you know with speed boosts and enchanters and such yeah, um it's clear it's massive too one uh, one other point that i wanted to add which is why he's so s plus s plus plus is that he has almost no hard like counters like there's not a champion where they pick it and you're like bam i'm gonna pull out this champion and you're gonna be crying you know like i've, I've got two of those but we can talk about it i was gonna later. say uh morgana yeah. and mordekaiser um mm. are both decent into him the, the, also the champion I'm, that's up much, next like, is the one jungle I, matchups the jungle matchup yeah well hey, we'll, we'll, we'll talk uh, i was gonna say we'll I, one later. of my counters too is the we next can champ coming up because i think that that's uh it's one that i actually have been playing into hecarim but it was also why hecarim moodier dominated the meta for so long because like all right i can't do anything right. better than hecarim so let me also be a backline tank and just run and bear slap somebody and just match clear right like it's not like udir is a good champ but it can basically do worse hecarim things you know um and chem tank right. was was so strong in that and I, they keep buffing it back up and while that while they pour it up, pull down the gore drinker stuff and so yeah i mean i think there's so many things we could keep praising hecarim for but yeah it's it's yeah. pick ban yeah. if you're not we can move on yeah okay <laughs> the uh ivern um i think he's exploitable so i would go with c or b what do you think uh llama you know i i gotta say i am a big ivern fan i do really like ivern i'm mastery seven ivern i think he is exploitable especially if you know how to play against ivern um but oh shoot am i uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, just, just, just 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 catch it up there okay um, okay we're good but, yeah, 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 yeah you're good sorry um but so, so i'm a big fan i think he can do some stuff really interestingly i think he is exploitable in the jungle but i think people don't know how to play against him um i mean i i'm i don't think he's like a tier plus i'd probably put him in b tier i see him in those other champs as kind of being like he has places where he can be successful but um i think he could get knocked down potentially too <laughs> okay b let's let's go with b let's do it yeah i'd yeah. rather have an ivern than an Amuma. So. <laughs> yeah i'm with you um all right jarvin uh i actually was pretty down on jarvin when the gore when like the item changes happen for bruisers um but Having seen him like continue to be, you know, really prioritized in pro, and having played a couple games with him recently, uh, I think that you just have to play a little differently. You can't just be the cowabunga, go in and, and survive forever. You kind of have to be a little smarter about your engages. You're going more for like damage and skirmishes and two v twos. Um, so, I would put uh, Jarvan at A tier. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think he still does what he did before well, right? Like he still can lock down carries, immobile people without flashes. Like he does that well, but he's not as much of a menace. So I'm with you on A tier on that. Yep. Um, I'll move into Karthus here. Um, so Karthus, I think, like, can we find jungle? He clears really quick. He actually one of the, has one of the fastest clears in the game right now. 
Um, like, I think he has some of that advantage. I think he can get abused, but like if, you know, he's getting abused mid game in team fights, he still has his ultimate and had can be value. I'd probably put him in B tier or maybe even a, like, I think he's kind of hovering right between that. Like he has value in a game. We're seeing him flex three or four roles. Um, and I don't think jungles like you put him jungle because he's terrible everywhere else. So I think if you're like, Hey, I need AP damage. I'd rather have him than in a Mumu echo Evelyn. You know, um, probably I'd rather have Diana, but you know, I'd probably put him in B tier. Uh, I hate mm. playing against Karthus no matter what. Um, however, historically, uh, he's been like usually like fifty three percent win rate, and you don't see him that often. Um, and right now he's at forty. He, he's he's like four percent below uh, average, four point five, um, which is not good for a champion that scales into late game and just full clears. Um, you know, usually that's really good in solo queue. So I, I actually had him in A tier and I didn't realize he was doing that bad. Uh, but that might be because people started picking him after Blabber uh, picked him, but they also lost. So I don't know. Right. <laughs> so I'm down with um, B or C. Uh, I, yeah, up to you. Yeah, I, I'd say he's more of a B tier, just given the flex potential. Um, you know, that's something to keep in mind with these champs. Sure. Like we said, like you can put him in. I'm, I've seen like some Karthus top, for example. Mm -hmm. Like there's some different things you can do with him. Um, I think we will actually, if we're talking about CCS, we're going to start seeing a lot more Karthus bot lane, but that might be something to talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah he's an interesting champ. A little hard to make work in a comp setting, for mm -hmm. sure, from the jungle world. And I think like as a champ, I'd probably put him as an A tier champ or even S tier champ, but I think as a jungler, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Like I think he's like probably a B tier jungler. Like he does jungle things well, but nothing he's going to excel at in the jungle space so but yeah i hear that right okay. yeah masi how about this one this is one you pulled uh, out this is me this again, right yeah, yeah yesterday I'm, yeah? I'm good yeah i got yelled at uh i was playing kane and i was supposed to be red kane and i took blue kane because i felt cool um it's a good champ i i think he's probably like b tier Uh, what do you guys say? I would, uh, I don't want to, I could go on about Kane, but I'm a big hater. Uh, I put him C tier, so mm. I'll let Llama. You know, I mean, I, I entered on Kane today in a Norms game, so, like, I think recency bias kicks in a little bit. However, I think he is okay into, like, a Hecker matchup, because he can still clear early, he has interesting gank angles, um, he can kind of disappear in a team fight for a few seconds on a carry. Um, I do think Mossy entered by going blue cane. Um, but, you know, I, I think on like two or three items, like the guy can survive for a long time with like Gore Drinker and his ultimate with red cane and like actually has a lot of presence with it. Um, I, I, I think like if we were to do this for 12 6, like in a couple patches, he might, honestly, we might see him more. I don't think he's ever going to be like super competitive viable, but like I'd probably put him in even pushing A tier just because of the flexibility he has, but I don't think his items are the best right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at the B tier champs and he feels more like a B tier champ to me at least. Okay. I, I What I will say is like one thing Kane can do at this setting is that he can fix your wave states. A big reason why I was blue Kane that game was because um, the waves were were a big problem the split push so he could just be everywhere and he can just soak up waves um, yeah that's true and maybe we'll see purple cane make a comeback maybe we won't um obviously you know the like he the purple cane stuff was more popular in the past uh, i do think that red cane right now though like the itemization is actually really strong like i, I disagree with you there because i think his uh, his items are low-key really strong like death dance and other stuff yeah yeah the, but the man is probably fine it's coming back yeah yeah my my only reason that I'm a big hater on him is that uh, he just takes a long time to get. If if teams aren't like fighting a lot and you're not getting off those ganks, he can take a long time to get to, you know, his red cane form. Um, and you kind of have to force stuff to get to that form. And if you're not that form, it's hard to contest the objectives and stuff. Yeah, and um, he's pretty weak early too. Like I'd rather have Hecker in the game. Early. Yeah, like yeah. but you need to kind of skirmish to get form. So it's like. Yeah. You kind of want to show up and just start smacking a melee character, you know? Like it, it is kind of weird mm -hmm. that playstyle with it. So yeah. Yeah, but you can take advantage yeah, of people. You definitely who are need facilitators yeah. for him. For sure. For right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, I started smacking oh, Sai on this one. <laughs> that's actually a good subject. I don't know if we want to talk. Do we want to talk about facilitating right now or after? I think we put a pin in it because I think it is a really interesting. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like let's talk, talk about facilitating about. later. For sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. 
who are we on? Kha'Zix? Okay, so I think Kha'Zix is the best assassin jungler uh, in the game right now. Uh, he's stomping solo queue. Uh, he did get picked in LEC once. It didn't go very well. Or was it LCS? I think it was LCS. It was, it was, was it LCS? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was LCS. It was LCS. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was yeah, in the yeah. red side, wasn't it? Uh, was Pride Soccer. Soccer. Pride Soccer? Okay. Yeah, no, it was, I think it was, it was inspired. Kha'Zix. Was inspired? Oh, you're right. Pride Soccer was not Zed. Pride Soccer was not Zed. That's that's what got me. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Zed. So um i don't know which is better <laughs> i haven't seen zed jungle in a long even time, above but... kiana is an assassin jungler for kha'zix uh i i still think oh Kiana's man yeah better, kiana right? is maybe better actually um but kha'zix will mm, i don't know yeah it's tough either way he's an assassin um i would put him in b tier maybe c yeah, I'm, I honestly, I'd prefer most of the B-tier champs over Kha'Zix, and maybe that's my own personal bias. Um, I, I feel like I just get less XP as Kha'Zix. Like, I've talked about that before. Like, I feel like he's my kryptonite in terms of, I just don't know how to pilot the champ well and how to do things well. And if he invades on top of me and I didn't know where he was, I'd get destroyed. But, um, I mean, honestly, I'd prefer B-tier. I'd prefer to have Kane if we're playing for that aggressive style than, than Kha'Zix. Mm. But. Yeah, I agree. All right. Okay. Man, even as a strong assassin, we'll see if we can get back to that. So Kindred here, um, I really like Kindred. I think it definitely needs to be enabled. You know, we, we can kind of keep mentioning that at least or alluding to it. Um, to be successful, if you can get marks early, it's really strong. She wins most skirmishes. Having the range advantage in almost every jungle matchup is awesome. Um, I think that her ult is massive for team fights. I think that it provides a lot of utility and forces teams to really play around it, similarly to Fiddlesticks. Um, I, I think that it also allows draft flexibility for AP Mage's bot that I know both, you know, uh, I don't know Shady Gecko if your team's playing that as much, but I know like Mossy's been, team's been playing a lot of like Zig's bot or things like that. Um, our team really likes playing AP bots as well. Um, so like I, I put Kindred in A tier just because I think she provides a lot of other things as like a traditional marksman who also can excel in the jungle. Um, however, she gets behind. She's kind of just an old bot and that even that isn't doing much. Yeah. Um, she's, she's tough to play and not only is she tough to play for the person playing her, she's tough to play for the team. But we're assuming that this person's a main and that the whole team is good and they practice injured a bunch. So I'd go with a tier. Yep. I can agree. Sweet. A tier it is. Lee Sin. Oh, this is me, right? Um, I've played Lee Sin a little bit. Uh, I have a hard time convincing my coach to draft it sometimes after stuff that happened last season. Um, you know, mostly involving Prowler Claws. It's all very exciting stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this champ, actually, my only game on him this season was, is with the Prowler Claw, too, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, this champ's good. He, I would put him in A tier. I mean, uh, he's just versatile. You know, he's hard to completely shut out of a game. He always has a lot to offer to your team. He's hard to pilot, but if we're assuming that, you know, we're at least in main, like me, you know, we can pilot him, we'll be fine. Um, yeah, I'm a big Lee Sin fan. I know that statistically he doesn't look great, but I mean, his pick rate and his ban rate are just so high. So it's like, yeah, he's always going to be like this, right? Statistically, he's just kind of one of those type champs. Um, gets better, you know, the higher elo you go, because he's just high skill cap. But mm -hmm. yeah, he's good. Kind of like Jarvan, you know, Jarvan, Lee Sin, Zin, those were the the three champs like if you watch lpl it's just those every single game kind of so mm -hmm. yep hmm. i would say he's definitely high mobility yeah i think he's high early game i think he can play both styles late game he can play either as a pick like as a pick champ to like kick in a carry or he can play primary disengage um you know i think he has some flexibility in kind of the mode that he plays honestly i think first rounding lisa or like first halfing lisa even as a blind pick isn't great um, because I think you can kind of just outscale him most of the time, um, unless like the other team is already locked in something else early game that you want to match aggression. Um, yeah, I, I but, think you know I'm kind your of your point earlier about uh, this is plat, you know, uh, is is this isn't uh, you know uh, FPX Lisa and <laughs> TN, yeah. you know, or this is a P one uh, Lisa and. and you know, A or B is kind of where I'm at with him. Uh, I was kind of leaning with that discussion more towards B. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think a P1 B, Lee Sin is more B tier. <laughs> you're happy with getting Lee Sin? Mm -hmm. Ah, I don't know. If you're really good on Lee Sin as a P1 player, you know, it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. So maybe I would put that A. 
I don't know. Up to you, Llama. <laughs> Man, yeah, I think I think we're right between. I, I mean, I'm a big Lee Sin fan. He's one of my most played, like just mastery point wise in the jungle. I don't think I've ever shown him in CCS or even a competitive league. Um, I think maybe that's my own bias. Um, so I mean, I I don't know. As I'm looking here, I I think he can go in A because I think a good you know Lee Sin can pull it out. Granted, as as a team, I might not want to Lee Sin as much. You know, like we're playing against it, and you know, if the enemy locks it, like I presume that they're confident with it too. So he also slots. You know, in a lot of comps. Oh, like, for sure. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's he can fight in the early sure. game. He can fight in the mid game. I think in plat, there's so many like teams playing CC, like lots of crowd control and lockdown that oh, you yeah. know, and team fight, and you're not going to be getting those sick insects like every day. Especially so, with how good Vagar is right now. Vagar yeah, makes this champ hate yeah. his life. But um, I, I think we could still put him a tier if if you're good with it. But yeah, there's stipulations. Good. So, okay. So Lilia is mine, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody was talking earlier about, or, you know, yeah, you might want to have a Lilia because of five man sleep, but, you know, Gwen will still be team fight. And that's kind of where I'm like, Lilia can just be that, you know, uh, and, and scales up. I think right now um, she can get shut down a little too much early. But if you're playing against like an opponent jungler, maybe, and I know we're assuming P1 versus P1, but like where I would want to pick Lilia is like, I'm going to be able to outfarm this guy and he's not going to be able to do enough in lanes. And then Lilia just is like a terror. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But I think she's kind of in the same tier as Fiddlesticks. Like, I would put her, you know, I think they're kind of similar champions. Um, and Lilia just, I think, has a little easier execution than Fiddlesticks because she doesn't have to wait for the, like, she can just flash over a wall and, and ult, or, and, yeah, and get her ult off. Um, but I think she's still just B tier. She's good B tier, but B tier. I think yep, she's more of a counter jungler or like a counter pick too. Like, okay, they pick triple melee. We can play short ranging mm -hmm. like Lilia. But once Lilia gets out ranged, like you only have Swirl Seed for range. And so like, yeah, yep. I think that's really what pushes her to B tier for me is like, yeah, they're just like, you have to pick her in the right situation. Otherwise, yeah. I think she's very mediocre. Well, well, she has major, like, identity issues. Like, I was mm -hmm. looking a lot into Lilia build path recently. I was putting a lot of time into watching, like, trying to find the best Lilia streamers and, like, asking them questions and stuff. Uh, there is a couple different ways you can itemize on her right now, but mm -hmm. it's, like, her big problem is, like, she wants to be so close, but she just gets blown up. Yeah. Um, easier to negate that type of issue in comp, but mm -hmm. she's still tricky to manage. Yeah, or, like, a champ like Karth Karthus or uh, Fiddle, if you get blown up in team fight because you're next to people, you've probably already killed some of them, you know? Like, I, 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 Lilia, it's like you need to swing around for 15 seconds to, to, to kind of wipe a team fight, but... Um, right, yeah. Moving to okay. uh, Master Yi here, Master Yi was cracked, I think, for, uh, what, like, four days before they like hot fixed days? him? Two four days? Two days, yeah. How long yeah. did it take when he was, like, 55% win rate? Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I think I played a single Yi game and I, I lost on him. I was like, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, what's yeah. good about it? Honestly, though, like I think in competitive, like I think he's D tier. I don't think he's yeah. offering enough to the team to actually be pick worthy ever. Um, you know, like I, if you're playing some kind of cheese, like with Kale Lulu, like maybe he can be a C tier champ. But like as a pick, yep. like I don't think he's any higher than D. Yeah, I agree. D tier. Yeah, or, or yeah, D -tier. put him in D. Um, I, I could put him in E, but he's still, you know, Master Yi. If you find the right situation where they have zero CC and you're mm -hmm. able to just power farm forever, then sure. But, yeah, totally. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, who okay. else is next chat? Is this... I think it's back to you, Masi. Or, or okay, did I skip over someone? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I think this is your, your response. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're getting lost in it. Um, <laughs> actually, Italy, I played, I played a lot in Italy last season, actually. Um... I'm a huge, huge fan. I have a, an account called E Girl Jungler where I just play Nidalee and I take Moonstone and I just heal my boys. It really fulfills the uh, jungler enchanter power fantasy that I have. <laughs> that being said, I have not been able to convince my coach to draft me Nidalee. Uh, I really, really like it. I played it like a ton in solo queue. Um, the Moonstone thing obviously got nerfed a while back. I still think it's decent. Uh, she's really, really hard. Like, she's kind of like Elise, but I think she's more workable because um, I think she has the ability to create like more i think creating early game leads is easier with nidalee in my opinion but that's just my own personal bias um yeah i i think there are a couple different angles of playing her and if you are playing her in that enchanter spot she's a lot easier to slot into a team you know maybe you have some kind of engaged like nautilus and then you kind of have like 
honestly, the, the Moonstone heals are still crazy. Um, and you still have like a huge power spike if you're, you know, on like Electrocute and, um, you know, you're, you're, you're strong in the early game and then you can kind of transition into just helping the team and like, you know, transition your leads into objectives, whatnot. Uh, in terms of where to place her, Right now, her numbers are a little bit weak. I would probably want to put her in B tier. I think you guys would disagree with that, so I'm between B and C tier. Uh, I'm leaning towards C. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you on that with C tier, uh, personally. I mean, I, I I don't know. She doesn't feel like a champ that offers too much to her team. Um, yeah, some heals I think is okay, but like if you're playing an enchanter kind of jungler, pick Ivern. Like, learn Ivern, pick up that champ. You know, you don't need to land a 1600, you know, range spear to do any damage and... I don't know. Her it feels cool, cool though. It, it does. Cool. It does feel cool. Like, threading some of those in, you know, like it's like Okami hitting Not four totally. Kaisa Ws. You know, it's like all right, if you can do that to win a team fight with six Nidalee spears, and that's fine. But yeah, <laughs> so be where she'll go in terms of the meta in the future. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Not Not to, I mean, she'll always be around as Nidalee. Mm -hmm. So although she hasn't been like pro LCK, meta for a while. they pick it, pick it at a high level recently. What I think uh, the Peanut played or something. I think Peanut might have played okay. it. Or somebody picked I it recently. I, but... I don't think I saw it, but I, I might want to go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Nocturne is interesting. Uh, I think he's I think he's OP in Silicu, um because he can go to these skirmishes, uh, you know, go to side lanes and everything. But I think people in comp are smarter than that. I think he can shut down some wombo combo comps. Like if you're picking like Orn Corky or something and you turn out the lights, it's like, oh shit, we can't yeah. see anybody. Um, so I would go with... Uh, I'd go with B tier. I don't think you can blind him. Uh, I think you need to see more of the comp. So. Yeah. yeah, I think this champ has a really funny tendency to like grief your own team because like... Whenever, like, when we, whenever we got our team together, our support player was like, yeah, like, we just picked Nocturne, and we picked Galio, and then we picked, like, Camille, and, like, we just all go in, and, like, it's so cool, and like, we pick Shen, and then it's, like, this type of thing is, like, it's so gimmicky, and there's a lot of, like, I, like, obviously there's not a ton of counterplay, but it's, like, if your comp can only do one thing, like, it's very easy to get tunnel visioned on that, um, and then, obviously, just right now in the, in the meta, I think Nocturne's a lot weaker than the other junglers. I will say that um, to your point about just turning the lights off, I think you can always tell that you're playing against a good Nocturne when they don't just automatically all go in <laughs> yeah. every time. Let's I go off do that Nocturne I, Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to do that because I just yeah. like flying around the map. But like, it's really good just to use it and like you know mm -hmm. turn off the lights, like you said. That's a, or even that's a good deny plays, yeah. Right. And be yeah. like, hey, maybe it's, I'm it's coming. It's very scary. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, but I, I don't I'm, know if you guys, if you saw my CCS game with Nocturne, but uh, when you're playing against opponents that, you know don't quite know what they're doing uh nocturne can absolutely slam people uh, oh for sure so, so i also his too. we're talking about his stride breaker build oh yeah yeah okay i was gonna say stride versus tank. like prowlers or even gore but nope. i think stride nope. yeah nope. just gives you so much more sticky potential to it but like he does feel like a utility assassin which is interesting like because he's exactly. not kitted out on damage but his r is huge the fury brings a spell shield you know like, and that's why I'd put him in B over C. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I think he still has that viability and potential. And with champs like Vex now, like, there, he has some cool yeah. pairings that don't just need to be, like, the Camille yeah, Galio. You don't, you don't have like to that. do the Galio. Yeah, yeah, exactly, have, yeah. Like, you can engage and follow up. 100%. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Noon is a champ that I think, like, can be a fine tank. Um, I don't think you're building him AP ever in competitive. Um, the snowball angles can be interesting. Um, has some viability, but, like... Ultimately, I think it's more annoyance more than actual good. Oh, pick. He's, he's a cheese pick for sure. Oh yeah, he for got, sure. He got nerfed as well, so he's not. Like oh, he did that this, this last patch. Super OP. Wait, not not that? this last, but it was like a couple patches. Yeah. Ago. Okay. I thought they buffed his numbers recently, but okay, it's good to know that no, they no, did not. Yeah, they took them down. Okay. Uh, so he's actually normally he's like sitting at like fifty three, and he's always the highest win rate, mm -hmm. but nobody's picking him. Now he's like pretty far down the list, and yeah. nobody's picking him. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm actually a new, new or I was a new new main. Um, and the, then I tried him in comp uh, when I first like got into comp, and it's like a totally different game. Like people are like right. stopping you from bringing your snowball in. They're like hitting you with long range CC, and you're or they're blocking the tanks are blocking your snowball, and you're just standing there, surprised Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he is C tier. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think he's quite griefing yeah, draft as agree. much as our D tier yeah. champs, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't think you're picking him. Yeah, <laughs> in the spot that it is. Uh, okay, we're on Olaf. Uh, there was a really, there's an Olaf game the other day. I forget if it was our group or your group. Um, the Olaf just kind of like won me nine. Uh, 
made me get like a little more faith for the champ. He definitely needs to be built around. I don't like Olaf in the current meta because I think he just gets outpaced by some other stuff. Like he's supposed to be like the early game jungler. And it's like, if you have Diana or Hecarim, like you're just kind of like, whatever, dude, like, you know, I can keep up with you. It's not a big deal. Um, if you build around him, he can be very strong. Uh, we played against a team. I forget which one it was. It might've been Sensei Squad or Crosspoint who picked, or maybe it was Iconic. I don't remember. They picked Olaf and they picked like a Karma mid and like a Lulu Jinx bot lane or something. And so they just have all these enchanters on Olaf and it's like, it was it looks really cool for the first 15 minutes. And then it's like, this Olaf has zero kills because we just didn't play into it. And now the chant feels useless. Um, yeah, there are a few really hard counters. The traditional back and forth Korean one is the, the, the Trundle counter pick. Cause it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, you can alt him and like Tiller's really good against him. And it's like, it goes back and forth in terms of like, who is it actually good for? But I, that's kind of where I would go to. Um, yeah. A lot of champs can keep up with him. I would probably put him in B or C tier. Maybe C tier is a little harsh, probably B tier. Um, Cause he still does look really good in certain situations, but he needs to be built around and it has to depend on the game. Yeah. Um, I, I um, I'm I'm hovering between B and C as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he has enough potential to be B pick as like a counter pick as well. Like if they pick lockdown or something, he can kind of give your team agency early game that they might not otherwise mm -hmm. have. Um, sure. That has that ability, and I think you know some of the undertow and the true damage that he can bring to a team. And you know, I mean, yeah, you can't just Ragnarok in at 40 minutes and expect to do anything. But yeah, you can still kind of pick out some people out of position and. I haven't tried chem tank on him, but I'm curious if you can just play him almost a little bit more utility and um, not feel like you need a one shot and then heal to full with a gore anymore. But I'd be curious. Well, kind of... there were 73 games of chem tank uh, versus 11,000 of gore drinker and 56% win rate with the chem tank. So, you might be onto I mean, something. That's, that's right there. <laughs> Maybe. You might be onto something. Um, I, I, I don't it's know. Next year, is it? Nope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Poppy, uh, is that me? No, I, think, or... I think it's you. Yeah, back to you. Oh, okay. uh, I really like Poppy. Um, I think uh, she's really good. I think that she can get... Um, I think she can get kind of hard countered more uh, more so than like, you know, Hecarim or Volibear or whatever these other chem tank junglers are. But she's really good at countering like comps. Um, but I don't quite think she's blind pickable, so I'm, I'm B tier with her. Yeah, even though, mm, that's interesting. Uh, even though Poppy's like my highest win rate in solo queue right now, I've been playing it kind of as a counter, right? It's like, okay, they pick Lisa and Diana, um, J4, yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah, it has huge counter potential. Um, I think it potentially could be blinded if that, when that was meta, right? Like, but for 12 5 now, I, as you're saying, some of these other champs like Hecarim, like, doesn't really care about a Poppy as much, you know? Um, you have to be so accurate with her Rs to actually make a difference in team fights unless you're just using it for the knockup. Um, I think it's a high value champion in certain scenarios. Um, her clear is solid, um, but I, I think as a jungler, I mean, I, I don't think her identity quite has been keeping up. So I think B tier is probably where I would place her too. Yeah, I guess upon hearing that, I can I can default to B tier as well. I have a couple of thoughts about her, but, but I don't want to, you know, I. I know we're already running rough on time, so... <laughs> yeah. no, it, and I, I I've seen you guys be playing it too, Monster. Like, you guys play it top quite a bit too, right? It's kind of like even like a an R4, R5 yeah. pick. Like, you've been kind of picking up uh, later Yeah, we on, have but... a unique... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a terrorist on this champ too, so <laughs> I don't think we're going to pick a jungle that much because I really like building... Um, take Predator, take Casual Yomus if you want, yep. take, uh, <laughs> like, if you're Snowball, and, like, there's a lot of, there's so much build path diversity you can yeah. do. Uh, so it feels really funny to have Chem Tank in, like, a Yomus and Predator Boots. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you just, just, like, you just in, you go so fast. Yep. Well, no, it's, I, yeah, I, it's, you know. I think you made a comment recently about the Poppy 2, like, needing other, like, engage tools or some other mechanisms, yeah. right? Like, you can't be, like, Poppy's my solo It doesn't engage, just go right? set yeah. up ganks. Yeah. yeah, I tell my coach this a million times, like, we cannot pick Poppy like with losing. Like I need at least one lane yeah, I can play yeah. off. Like, someone needs to come so in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm with you. Um, Kiana's a champ that again, like someone that I never really learned, but I think she is one of the best assassins. I think all the way through. Once you figure out how to play the champion, um, playing it well is absolutely destructive. I think even in competitive, um, the way she can hold space, especially with her ult around major objectives, I think is massive. You know, we're talking about like dragons and barons. Um, her, her burst potential out of fog is huge. She has quite a bit of CC if she can get a, a stun on top of it. I'd probably put her in A tier just because I think she offers a lot and is probably the best assassin. I'd put her above champs like Kane and Nocturne as well. So I, um, 
like she's doing she's just fine in solo queue um and but i'm not seeing her at all in pro um in mid or jungle um and i think that as a champion that has historically had some pro presence um i think she's just not clearing fast enough that she's kind of like cheesy where she's got to get that level three gank off um and then she can like really make an impact or she's got to get to like two items and in the end she is just a squishy assassin where there's a lot of enchanters in, in the yeah. meta right now and stuff that like can stop her or you know cc bots um and a lot of the junglers are getting, getting played have a lot of cc as well you're not you know you're not against like graves as often and stuff um so that's why i would put her in b tier yeah i think she's too high variance to put an a tier she's just like there's a lot of things in the meta i think that can just dunk on her and her clear just isn't we, what it we do was, have so. kha'zix in c tier so i don't feel bad about putting her yeah. step above him absolutely yeah i, I think mm -hmm. she can fit a slot in there as well absolutely especially at p1 you know with that variance yep. you're talking about true okay uh remus uh i just d tier like I, I he's a funny champ i play him sometimes in ranked like when i'm in a good mood but yeah d tier yeah i mean i think he might have like c tier potential if they draft three ad's first half and like you can maybe pull out r3 but like you're really gonna second phase a ramus though like I mean, yeah no that's what i'm saying like i feel like i feel like if i was yeah. that's what c tier is, is right it, in second phase so. yes yeah uh, you're right I, I think that's fair i don't want to put him in the same yeah. place as gwen is a thing so <laughs> are you th he's, uh, oh that's right okay so you're thinking what is worse but <laughs> I, I i would put him c tier you know um he can have those early ganks uh i i do agree that like it's ramus you know uh, but i play a little bit of ramus and i always love it when i see like 80 mid 80 jungle 80 top maybe they have ap bot but like you're gonna be really mm -hmm. tanky <laughs> and i think Tank uh, is honestly just so good this past and you're kind of anyway. in the same yeah yeah yep and you're kind of in the same spot as Nunu. Yeah, uh, yeah where it feels kind of cheesy. It, it's it's very cheesy. Um, yeah. But Nunu-esque. That's kind of what we have made our C tier. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost wonder if we need to like just get rid of E. <laughs> like, <what champion? laughs> yeah, you no, know, these champs are actually griefing draft. <laughs> there, you know? there might be a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, is, is, is this side for me? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, She's doing really well in solo queue, but and we are seeing a little bit of pro. Um, she's very like cheesy though, like where you have to get ahead early, and she's really hard to play out like late game team fights because she's very like one dimensional. Um, but she has that really strong. It's like more so than an Elise. Um, I'm leaning towards B, but I could be convinced for C. I think B. I I think some of her matchups are just like. Like, she makes some matchups really, really unplayable for the enemy team, like, more so than a lot of the other stuff in C tier. So I definitely think she deserves the spot in B tier. Um, hard for me to put her A just because she can be very inconsistent in, in, in comp compared mm -hmm. to some of these other things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would just, that's, I'd put her B. And I think some of the things that, like, I'm, I totally agree. I think some of the things that, like, also made her really good, like, some of her sustain that she gets from the jungle, whatever, like, that's not needed right now. And so, like, you know, she even her burrows and tunnels and stuff, I, yeah, it feels like you can probably get away with picking it okay, but, you know, I wouldn't do much. Um, Rengar, I mean, I'd put him all the way down to D tier. Um, I, I think that he's very niche, um, but, like, I really don't think he's a competitively viable pick. We'll, we'll check again after the rework. Yep. Yeah, yep. yep. Come back, Kat. See you later. Oh, uh, Sejuani just C tier, I think. Uh, I, this champ, I, this might, you know, I know there are some people who are very opinionated about Sejuani. Um, I might call them a little stuck in the old days, if you will, when Sejuani was actually good. Uh, this champ just like, when I see Sejuani on the enemy team, it just like opens up so many picks for me that I feel like look amazing. Uh, a couple things that come to mind are like Kindred, uh talia uh trundle like stuff like that like just dunks on it so hard um you know if you're a team and you really like sejuani nothing against you but like i think there's just champs right now that do what she does better um you know like like jarvin for example i don't know why you would ever want like or hecarim like you know like her engage cool she's kind of tanky but yeah i can't imagine ever taking sejuani over those guys i think uh sejuani undervalued right now uh so i actually have opposite opinion and i may be stuck in my old ways as a sejuani jarvin zach free trick <laughs> as i used to be anyway 
Um, but uh, I think that uh, the reason I would put her in B tier is because you would never pick her um, blind. Uh, you have to pick her, and you would want to do it if you had like a couple melees or you've got a Brom. I think that she can be like decently strong early, and she becomes really unkillable if you get ahead. Like uh, when I play her in solo queue, uh, you know, I'm going for those early ganks and stuff, and then if I get a couple items on me, I'm very strong. Um, and she just always has that engaged potential as well. Yeah, I think she brings a lot of things to the table that competitive teams in P1 want. She has CC, she has gank potential, she has lockdown, she has long range, like targeted with her ultimate if she can get that. Like she brings a lot to the team, I think, that champions like Amumu want to do, but can do it less well. And it synergizes really well with any melee. You know, I think that because of that other passive, it kind of feels like a Braum in a sense, like you're picking it for the same kind of, same kind of role, but she can also just beef boy front line and like that's pretty huge too. I totally agree, though. She cannot be picked blind. No, like, yeah, 100%. Especially yeah. if Trundle like, is oh, up. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the freest. Yeah, you say, all right, uh, I'll, I'll just pick <laughs> Trundle into it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go Fleet Footwork. Uh, yeah. That's not good anymore. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I definitely played the Glacial Augment game on Sedge once because I was like, ah, I can't, you know, cause oh, I, I no. picked a B3 and I was like, oh, this is a mistake. Pop like a. <laughs> yep, yep. Balloon. Ooh, what do we think about the evil clown, guys? D tier, get him out of here. I don't think he has any oh, place in Oh, there's no way. There's no way. I don't no think he has any He's place sick. in competitive. Absolutely not, dude. Absolutely <laughs> not. I, I've seen this champ picked in the LPL. I've seen, you know, no. I've seen it work in like amateur comp leagues. I think you're being a little too harsh on the clown. <laughs> I think he's at least. I think he's at least uh, B tier. Unironically, like. At this level of play, I unironically think he, he's at least B tier. He has a Except very, remember very creative that everybody's pathing. B1. Yeah, I understand. He has very, back. very creative pathing. Uh, I've never not seen a bot lane die to the uh, the XD cheese, you know, triple. It's like uh, Raptors into red into Krugs. What are you going to do, though, King. when the other team invades where you're setting up and takes all your traps to start? <laughs> It's like, that's yeah. why you have creative pathing. Like, you can just go <laughs> to your wolves. Like, because you can go you're wherever. No clear. You They're going to come find clear. you, though. The, the clown just, just sets you. you free, bro. I'm telling you. He is okay. he is the most evil champ in League. He, no, he's not I the will say. At will least say, C tier, bro. At least C tier. There's no I way. I will say that the Leandre's build is 54% win rate right okay. now. And the Duskblade is 52 so it could be that people what about are just Sunfire. Going How about for the Sunfire? Uh, Sunfire is only a thousand games, but it is fifty-five percent. So I, yeah, I'm he's, he's, he's an item diversity. carrier. So much item diversity. It, 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 it feels like Bard, where it's a champ that it's like it feels cheese, but you can build anything and it does exactly the same thing. You know, so like yep. yeah. I don't know. I feel bad putting him any higher than C, but if y'all agree that he no, would be C, C or or D is for me. And it, if Mossy really okay, wants okay. him higher yeah, than Yeah, he seems as cheese as Nunu that, like, I'm sure, yeah. I don't know. He seems like these champs that could be, you know, picked, but. Sure. Man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Shivana, though, I mean, I think AP is still fine. I think she has some flexibility top. Whippo played at top here. Um, man, I, I think I would put her in B tier because I think yeah. she has some potential. D tier but... or E tier. almost term. lost that game. Yeah. <laughs> Which, with the Shivana top. <laughs> that, that is true. Okay, you think it's that bad? I think it still has some cheese. What, is it lower than C, do you think? I I, I think... Lower than C. Uh, I, I don't no, think no. I think you could put C and you have to go the tank uh, into... Um... Whoa, holy Frostfire. shit. So this has 60% win rate going Frostfire into Demonic. Jungle? I'm going to have to start. I'm going to have to yeah. explore that's, that's the... Yeah, that's, that's the build. Wow. That actually you know, seems hey. really strong. No, all right, but my only problem is that she's very one-dimensional. It's yeah, like she's yeah, got to get I dragons, agree. and in solo queue you can kind of sneak away at those dragons yeah. and stuff. It, in comp, they're not gonna, they're not gonna. Let and you and, get and if they show up and you're on the dragon, you get screwed. Like what Shavon? And, and you're not a cha you're not like a champion yeah, until not. level six. So, um, yeah, S you have no CC, no gank setup. You're just gonna yeah. get run over. I, I think so. she's D tier. I think yeah. she's D tier. Okay. Okay, um, let's let's try to speed round this, guys. <laughs> speed, speed round it for the bottom half of the bracket. We've got like ten left. Um, am I Skarner? Uh, I don't remember. I think we, I think we might have got off here. Uh, oh oh, different choice. I mean double Skarner because I don't think I've said you on my list. Sure, or go ahead. Shibana. Lama, you go ahead. Yeah yeah, uh, Skarner. I I I mean it's funny. It's one of the few champs on uh, OPGG that doesn't have enough data to actually be supported from solo queue stats. I don't <laughs> think it's really ever picked. Um, I think it has things that might be okay about it, but I think it's honestly in C or D tier myself. Uh, I, I think that Skarner uh, can be, you know, just as strong as um, 
He could be almost as strong. I, I think, like, I kind of feel like Skarner is a little bit like Ivern. Um, but I I can go with uh, C tier. I can do that. Mm. He just doesn't do anything till six. You're like a Talia one trick, aren't you, Mossy? I feel like we gotta leave you. Yeah, to I mean that's <laughs> what you call me. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Talia is like B tier personally. That's where I'd put her. I agree. I, I think she was super strong for a little bit. I think she still has potential with her ultimate and can do cool stuff. But at a high level of play, she can get pretty abused. She's interesting. Is she better, I like is she she better, is she better than uh, Echo and Evelyn? I think so. Absolutely. 250%. Okay. Yep. All right. Then put her in, C, in B tier. Okay. Uh, Talon, uh, I haven't seen Talon in a while. Apparently he's doing well now, but it's an assassin build. And I think the reason that he was good in comp before mm. was because of the core drinker build. Because yeah. he could stay alive for so long. And now he's just cheesing people and he's really good at that. So I'd say he's like better than Kha'Zix, but um, he's not... Well, maybe not better than Kha'Zix because he doesn't have the invisibility. I, I'd still say C tier probably. Yeah. He, he that's what, say, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying I'd put him in like, yeah, C tier. Yeah. Um, for Trundle, is this back to me? I think so. Uh, I think for Trundle, like, honestly, I think he's an A tier champ. I think you can blind him. Um, I, I think he's fine to just pick still um, because he provides enough for the team. I feel also like mitigates the enemy in draft to say like, okay, we don't want to pick tanks. Maybe Malphite isn't a look here. Maybe we don't want to pick these other beef boys. So like, honestly, I think he's still an A tier champ. Like, I think you can still just kind of slot him in and he can he, play both styles. He's also one of the champions yeah. that like you can pick into like Diana Leeson, Jarvan, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it only has to be a counter pick too, right? Like uh, that's why I think he's higher than like a B tier. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Because you can just thwart them from going mm -hmm. those A tier champions. For sure. Uh personally I would probably have Udir here in either A or B tier. I actually think he's really strong right now. The Sunfire build with Frozen Heart is like incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um it's not really the same as what he used to do with the chem tank and stuff, but he's like really beefy. You know, you take lethal tempo, like you can take these extended trades, he's hard to kill. Uh you can put more points in the W early, and you're kind of just a problem. I really like him still as an answer to Hecarim. Mm -hmm. um, I've been putting some playtime on him. Uh, I think he's okay as an answer to Diana. Um, so, you know, maybe more of a counter pick. He's not exactly blind pickable because I think he does have his rough matchups like Jarvan, for example. Um, yeah, overall, I'd probably put him like B tier, mm -hmm. A or B. B. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think he's quite good enough to be an A tier champ, but he can still just heavy clear, but now he's going to be a bear running at you and like. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, Vi, uh, she's pretty one-dimensional. She really wants to get to level six before she can make effective, strong ganks. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm leaning towards C, but there are some champions recently that like, ah, no, she just goes C. She just goes too deep against a lot of yep. the, the champions C. you want to shut down with her. Yeah, um, I, I think she has potential with the right comps. She actually did get a play, I think, in LPL recently too. Um, but I, yeah, I don't think there's... You need your whole comp things. backing you up. Yeah, if absolutely. If you go in on like a Zarya and you ult a Zarya and then she like ease really ease out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're chasing now in her tower and you need like a Nocturne with you. Like, why are you picking by, you know, yeah. I agree. Yep. And she's so committal. Like, if you're not super ahead, yep. she's not going to tank either. Um, Viego's one of my most played was last season. I think it's good. I think it's a worse and competitive. Honestly, I think is a very much solo queue still. Um, really? I th yeah, I think he has potential. Um, and maybe I just haven't found the angles with Viego and competitive as much recently. Um, but I feel like unless you have a team that can really support you on going in and getting a kill, like getting a lockdown, someone like LeBlanc with you, um, Renata that can help save you, have some other backline access, something like Ziri as well, even like I've seen that in kind of a comp built out with like Jace maybe for some poke. I feel like Viego as, as a champion is still more challenging to play. Um, that I, I look at these other A-tier champs and I wouldn't really want to pick Viego into A-tier or anything above it, which makes me feel like he might be a B-tier champ for me. Uh, I'm, we're seeing Viego a lot still in in all aspects of pro. Um, and he's just still going the Divine Thunder into Death Stance, into, you know... Who's that was talking shit about Ma. the build? Ma. Someone was saying something bad about the build, too, was saying that it was just better to go, like, one of the attack speed ones, like one of the attack speed... Are you still saying you gotta go to Vine otherwise like I, I think I think the whole point of the champion is stay long enough stay alive long enough to get a reset. Mm -hmm. Because once you get a reset, it's it's all over for the other team. And that's yeah. why I think he's still A tier. Um just because 
Like, I wouldn't mind somebody getting Diego. I'm fine playing into it mm -hmm. um, because you can, like, be smart and, and kill him. But, you know, if somebody was, like, a really good Diego, I'd probably ban it. Uh, so I, I'd yeah. say A-tier. He's just he's he's blindable, like, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you don't really care what the other person... He doesn't have any hard counters. It's Diego, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I'm with you. Masi, what was your final verdict? Do you say A or B? Uh, B. B? Yeah, I think he's right there. Yeah, he's, I mean, you know, I think I'm going to overrule that. I think I'm going to stick with uh, with Gecko on that one. I think he he is viable enough as a blind pick in competitive to put him in A. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I do Volibear? And I, I don't know if it's mine, but um, I think Volibear is the next uh, champion right after Hecarim. I would almost put, I, I think, I, 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 I would just put him S, um, but... I almost want to put him S plus. Mm. I think he's just so good early game, and people need to just play like way more aggressive with him early, and then be tower diving. Mm -hmm. And are you thinking uh, the chem tank build still right? Like you're not going to oh, for sure. damage, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. The only thing is I like you can't go Frozen Heart mm -hmm. as easy as like Hecarim. He mm -hmm. doesn't like it as much. Yeah. Um, but you just Q max. You mm -hmm. go the other thing, and you dive turrets. Yep. And yep. like like what they can't do anything about it like we saw with uh blabber played it recently and they went rise and they just rise ulted bot yeah. and it was like bam they got a double kill it's like you just turn the turret off it makes dives so easy absolutely yeah i feel like he's not quite s plus like he's pick ban right now but i'm with you in the s tier that i think he's really strong i think his only weakness is super late game um but again like you're not picking volley bear for late game Team fights, nope. right? Like you're picking him to get single target lockdown. Mm -hmm. Things why we pick Zin Zhao and stuff like that in the past. Too, He's really so. strong in the one v one. Yeah, uh, as well. And two v twos. Must you gonna grab Warwick? Uh, C or D tier for sure. Yeah. I don't have a lot of thoughts on the champ. He's just kind of a meme. I'd put him. I'd put Sorry, him. Sorry, <laughs> So he has like a good win rate, but I think it's just solo queue where everybody's fighting. So I'd put him D tier. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't think he quite griefs your draft, but I don't think he's good enough. He's a cheese pick top two, but I think on your team, like, why are you picking up Warwick on your team? Like, what is he giving you that another champ isn't? Warwick uh, was one of those champions that I was playing a lot before I got into comp, and then I tried him in comp, and it's like, holy crap, this is hard to play. Like, <laughs> never going back. A carry, you're always ulting just like a tank or something because they're standing in the way. It's like, damn. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute, I never have backline access, and if I do, like, yeah. at least play someone like Vi, you can press R on their face, right? Like, at least you can always get the mm -hmm. right target with someone like Vi if you're going to go deep. Okay, uh, Zin Sao, uh, B tier for me. Yeah, I, I think he's fallen off. I think two patches ago, we'd put him in A or S even, um, but I think right now he's not as scary. I, I actually would have had him in, in C tier, um, but I've seen that he's recovered a little bit. But, mm -hmm. like, I had a game against Zin Sao last night, I think, and, or no, it was, it was a couple nights ago. And the one second off of his ult, like that was the difference maker wow. in like, but, you know, and it's like, I really noticed that that one second was gone. Hmm. Interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not doing what he was doing as well now with the other item buffs and or nerfs and stuff. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not isolating targets as well as the other champs are like pick volley over Zen, like hundred percent. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Zach, I think is one of the best long range engages right now. Still, like I, I if I look at some of these other champs here, like who else is going to be frontline engage? I think it's better than Sedjuani. Like I would put Zach in A tier still, and I know you're like a Zach player too, so maybe there's some bias there. But I think if you're like, hey, we need a jungler to go in and be tanky and disrupt and get on backline, Zach is the best choice still in the jungle to do that. It's it's funny uh, that you say you know I I am I love Zach. Uh, he's one of my favorite champions, um, but there's a reason that I rarely pull him out, and it's because you pick him blind like early, and you get screwed. Like you really need to pick him like on R three or, or like R or, like B four, uh, or you see like a bunch of immobile bot, like a full mobile bot. Like you have to see their full bot lane before mm -hmm. you pick Zach um, to see that they're not going something like Morgana or whatever. Um, because you can get cutted out so hard. So mm -hmm. that's why I would actually put him B tier, um, because I, I don't want to blind him. Like, I want to blind a, a Jarvan or something. Do you feel like yeah. there's a chance... We're talking that... about Zach, right? Yeah, Zach. Is there, do you feel like there's a chance that do what Zach does better, I guess, too? As I'm looking at some of the AS, S+. Plus. I think, like, J4 maybe has the same, like, backline lockdown. Um, so... That's only, like, a good piece of that, but I'm... I'm uh, Zach's I range, think, though, I think Zach is, like, is really strong. so creative. I think yeah. he's really strong. I just think... 
and I think that he's not that his team kind of has to facilitate him because he can be invaded mm-hmm. uh, by like Kindred, Jarvan, Volibear, all these people. Yeah. They can come skirmish him. He needs to get to like level four, level five. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's weird because like I do think he's better than all these champs in B tier. Mm-hmm. But I, I yeah, like want to put him in like B plus. So I guess I'd be okay yeah. putting him in A. Uh, just because if I only like there was an A plus or, or like a B plus B tier, plus, I feel yeah. like he'd fit right I in. I definitely he's B know? plus and not like A minus even. So like I think for that we can still put him in yeah. B. Um, yeah, I would put him at the top of B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, absolutely, absolutely, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Brand, I think we can agree is E tier. I actually played against the brand E-tier. jungle. E tier. These are all the champs I, that I, I played against out the brand jungle because they weren't junglers. I was just like these these champs. If right, you're right. These champs jungle. Wait, were you saying he was good or no? Uh, no, nah, I, I, no, no, no. I think he's E tier. I played against. Okay, okay. I think I played against the brand jungle in CCS. Or no, maybe it was a scrim. It was a scrim. I think. And we, we were just... like, there's no way that's Brand Jungle. And then it was Brand Jungle. And then Brand Jungle just lost. I was like, damn, that's nuts. <laughs> Let's... Yeah. Um, uh, what do we think about Morgana then? C tier. Yeah, I think Ooh. she can still have positions where she's okay. Um, her clear is fine still, but it's sort of like pick her support. Like if you need a Morgana on your team, don't play Jungle. Like pick something else. <laughs> I, I would honestly put a D tier because I, I feel, well, mm, it's hard. I, I would put a D tier because it's like, like the stuff we talked about earlier about having like an AP Jungle on your team and then like... Yeah. Like she's just very high variance, you know. Like yeah. sometimes, it, you know, like it, I, I, it looks really bad. It, in the it feels least esque in that way stuff. too. As I see Elise yeah. in D, I feel like oh, that yeah. feels more equivalent to me than someone like Echo or Evelyn. But yeah, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. So Rumble, when he <laughs> was like meta, it was like he was like forty seven percent win rate in solo queue or something. It's mm-hmm. like three percent mm-hmm. below. He's currently like only a percent below average, and. He did get those armor buffs. Nobody's playing him, but I I never played him. I was like, this is the flavor of the month. It's mm-hmm. just dumb. I don't want to play it. Like, and I never like learned like what is Rumble like good for? Like, is he good right now? Yeah. Like, uh... that, is this the next thing? Like, or <laughs> is back, it just yeah. it, it, it so. are the things that made him good not good anymore? And yeah. he's just kind of like decent now in solo queue jungle. It was his clear spread in his overheat, right? Mm-hmm. Which yeah, it was his overheat. Him. I don't remember if it so got good. reverted. It did with his W because he used to be able to stack W level one. It it might have been partially reverted. Um, I don't think he's as good as he once was, and I think he's oh. hard to work around as opposed to a lot of these other junglers. I would put him in at least. Uh, I, I would probably put him in D tier, honestly. Mm-hmm. I just think he's really really hard to work I, around. I think his uh, ultimate he, feels like better Corky ult though, like or like at least equivalent it is, now. You that's know? all he is. I mean, yeah. he's a walking R, but he doesn't have anything else going for him, in my yeah. opinion. I don't think he really skirmishes any of these champs well. Like you know, yeah, it's clear as like whatever you know. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he can shut down super hard early. Honestly, I think he yeah. might be C tierable, like in terms of if you need, you know, like I see some of other champs, but you know, if people optimize his build and stuff, yeah. you know. We could be wrong, and it's like next week pros are going to be pulling him out, and he's A tier now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not seeing organization that's making him hit. insane, but I mean, I, 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 I think he might be a little bit better than a D tier champ. But okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? No, no, no. Put him D so that C tier isn't two lines. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now it looks. Better. That's <laughs> that. That is why he made it into D tier. Um, All right. Well, hey, Wonderful. that kind of gets through the tier list of ch- champs, and man, that is a conversation to have. I mean, these are the three best junglers Oof. in the CCS. Um, me being third right now, what are we? Collectively, 30 and 2. There's only two are from me. So, um, <laughs> you know, Come on, man. Yeah, you guys do be doing a little bit of trolling. Yeah, there's a little bit of trolling going on. You know, I think I, I got to go back to this tier list before we play our next game here. Um, but, uh, uh, Poppy, B tier? Poppy, okay, oh, don't shit. Okay, that. wait. I, I, can't, I can't pick it B2 anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. I think we picked R2. So, um, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I really appreciate just getting the chance to dive into this. Man, we could have these conversations be twice as long. Um, but if you have questions, let us know. Um, if you disagree, yell at us. Um, I, you know, I think we even have some yeah. disagreements b- between each other. Um, yeah. So Use at, trash talk channel. Yeah, yeah. You trash talk channel. We'll we'll post it there. Say you know we're right, you're wrong, and uh, fight us on on the rift. Um, also, we're gonna spam if you pick a D tier champ in competitive now, um, and we'll we'll share that list there. So before we get out of here, I just want to do a little sign off uh, for each of y'all. Um, Mossy to share. I know we didn't do kind of a little lead in there, but what do you got to share as we're as we're closing out our tier list today? Uh- I don't have much to share right now. I mean, I guess, you know, check out 
as like I said last time, like the Goldfish Gaming Twitter, like my Twitter, it's like Goldfish Esports. You know, it'll be in the description, I'm sure. Um, I'll probably have a Power Rankings coming out, like, well, as of like tomorrow when we're filming this. So, you know, if please read my stuff. Sometimes I feel like people don't, and it's sad. Um, and then like I can tell when people read it because they get mad at me. So, you know, I'll make sure to have some hot takes. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all I got. And Shady Gecko, how about for yourself? Uh, this was fun. It was uh, really interesting. It's kind of cool to see it all out there uh, on paper. Um, I don't really have any handles or anything, but uh, yeah, we're going to win this whole thing easy. <laughs> I just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this, is, uh, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time, both of you coming out. For me, I'm BBB Llama. Um, yeah, we got, you know, some of the, be the best teams in CCS right now all come together, putting the brains together for, for the common good, you know, so... Um, yeah, anyway, stay posted for more content from Jungle Diff, and for now, we'll be signing off. See you next time.